morning, Cinema Gulp. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to review Mission Impossible Fallout. If either of you cinema drunks are too intoxicated to discuss the movie, then MoviePass will disavow you and cancel your credit card on your mission, which will self-destruct in five seconds. <laughs> Well, are you all right? I'll be all right. Survived uh, our elaborate opening scene action stunt. My mustache survived. That's what I was worried about. Thank God. Yeah. Okay, so Mission Impossible Fallout. That's what we just saw um, after we crashed that helicopter back there. And I absolutely loved this movie, John. I thought it was a great action movie. It was a great Mission Impossible movie. Um, it was a decent Tom Hanks performance. Tom Cruise, that is. It'd be interesting Tom to see Hanks Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks runs then. really fast. Tom Hanks, excuse me, Tom Cruise has never run faster than he did at, what, 55 years old or whatever he is? They've got to be doing speed up time lapse on these damn cameras. Or he's, he's running so fast, there's like smoke behind him at this point. He's on a moving sidewalk or something. I'm not sure how they do it. But. Yeah, but um, this movie was a blast. Uh, he's whatever. A good, he's a good summer draw. Yeah, he's a summer draw with like action movies, like old fashioned type of, you know, concepts. And uh, this one, to me, was the first one since maybe one and three that felt like at least. For the first half, the script came first. There's in every one of these movies, there's ones where they 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 progress the story, and ones that are kind of just like, whoa, look at that. Um, this one has a little bit of both. I'm not gonna lie, but at least I enjoyed all of the ones they had to offer. And there's some really great fight scenes in this with good choreography. Um, there's actually a, a decent amount of character development too. Once again, for Ethan Hunt's character, which you get every couple of movies, and I want to say the last time you got this much was probably three, because that's the one where you actually learn anything about Ethan Hunt. Mm -hmm. I loved it. John, what did you think about Mission Possible Fallout? Uh, I would choose to not accept this movie. I would not really want to watch it again. I was pretty damn bored in this movie. Um, I felt like it was over the top in a lot of ways. Um, I thought it telegraphed way too many of its reveals and twists. Um, almost nothing in terms of twists and reveals worked for me. It didn't work for me on a stunt level. As you pointed out, I feel like there's some of the bigger stunts of the films don't really have true cause and effect in the film. They're just there to be spectacle. Um, yeah, I, I was very disappointed in this movie. I was expecting a bit more. I'd, I'd heard some high praise about it and, and maybe had high expectations, but I still don't think that's why I didn't like it as much as you or, or some of the other people out there. It just fell very flat for me. Hmm. I say don't listen to Freddie Mercury over here. Uh, go out and see this movie. No, uh, those are all well taken points. I mean, you can't tell what one person is going to like from one movie to the next. You never can. Expectations going in with you, there usually aren't any because you stay away from things like that. Because for me, maybe I'm just dumb or like I'm just I'm just a shoving popcorn in my mo uh, mouth moviegoer because I didn't really see the twists and turns or maybe I just don't let my brain work overtime trying to figure it out before I just let them come. For me, I felt like it was in the filmmaking. There was constantly cutaways that were giving you telegraphing certain moments. Dun dun dun! Little, little evil guy in the little corner. Little cutaways, either to a person's face or an object on a table, that let you know this is where this is going to go. In the big stunt scene, that that had a setup to what was going to happen in it with just very poor dialogue between the two, Henry Cavill and and Tom Cruise. Their dialogue before jumping out of the plane was just such cheesy exposition to let us know what's about to happen in that scene. Um, Again, you seem to know everything that's going to happen in this movie before it happens, and I didn't. Well, so we clearly like Cruise, saw them with different glasses like on. Like Tom Cruise, I'm one step ahead of the movie. Yeah, I guess you are. Like, I don't know if there's anything that you didn't catch before it happened. That, and that sucks. That, that sucks. Really, the, you know, you go to see these movies for the action. I, the stories have always been convoluted and, and never made a whole lot of sense. It's another, you know, got to track down a missing item. Uh, in this one, it's, you know, nuclear... Um, uh, what the fuck is it? Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Does, I want to talk about the script really quickly. I know okay. we did Mission Impossible, you don't need to talk about the script that much, but it's Christopher McQuarrie, who did win an Oscar for writing uh, mm. back uh, 23 that years ago true. for Usual Suspect. 
I find his like when people go, oh, uh, uh, in Justice League, did you hear the, the the Josh Whedon dialogue as opposed to the whatever dialogue? And I'm like, maybe because he's got a little thing in there. Oh, that's Shane Black dialogue, blah blah blah. I think that he still produces better written movies than some. I, I I like three, I like four. Those had quality filmmakers behind them too. But Christopher McQuarrie being the only one that's done two, you now see sort of his sense of where he takes these movies and his aesthetic. And it does have a lot to do with how people talk to each other because there's small, subtle, witty humor put in there. Little strengths that Tom Cruise has of being charming and funny. And then of course you, I thought they used Simon Pegg perfectly finally in this movie. I really didn't think he overshadowed. He wasn't so in your face like he was in the in the previous two. He had a just a good amount of screen time and, and they didn't try to make him some over on awesome like action fighter we know who he is yes he's a field operative now yeah. I, I just i like the dialogue i like the, the the little subtleties yeah the stories are all convoluted so i'm not saying he did a good job of a to b to c as far as like plot but but the way they talk to each other and some of the little banter that happens when they're all on earpiece and stuff i really enjoy that stuff uh, in this one and the one before it you even said and i agree with you, it was trying really hard to be kind of serious had this yeah. kind of dark knight hans zimmer pulse pounding uh, music, which I liked a lot, but it didn't maybe feel right in, in the action stunts because um, it was trying to really get that serious action note going, you know? I really was laughing at, at the entire <laughs> finale of the film. Um, the, the climactic wrap up or like the, 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 the climax? The climax action scene, and we can't go into details of I was why, disappointed in the climax that it was kind of a straightforward action stunt instead of like well, the hand-to-hand -hand fights, head, you know. the, I think we both kind of said one of our yeah. favorite moments is a hand-to-hand is a -hand fight that yeah. happens kind of early in the film, especially the helicopter scene towards the end of the film. It just was so unrealistic. But it, it leads to a bit of a handheld scene, hand-to-hand uh, -hand fighting scene that could have been better. And, and, and even that scene, I don't think... I, I was like, okay, well, they've done a good job earlier in the film with the hand-to-hand -hand fighting. At least this finale is going to wrap up with a, a good battle between our, our two, our villain and our hero, and um, didn't quite get it. Yeah. Um, and, and I was just laughing. I wanted more. You finally have Tom Cruise and Tom Hanks on a cliff fighting each other, and we just it didn't live up to expectations. You had mentioned you were worried about him you know, coming back because of the cinematography of the fifth film that had kind of a brown It was brown. Tint, wasn't yeah. as colorful as what Brad Bird brought to the series. Hard to follow Brad Bird, though. Yeah, and this one, um, I think you even pointed out early on, there's a lot of lens flares that seems like it's kind of hearkening back <laughs> I to said, did JJ to J. J. Abrams. This movie? Or at least he gave some notes there. <laughs> um, so that stood out to me. But yeah, the film had kind of like a, a bit of a one-note color palette. It's still kind of stuck with a like an orange uh, and brown it to some degree. It looks slightly deeper. Visually, the locations and the way they frame these various locations that they're in looked pretty beautiful, I thought. Absolutely. It, it, it always was kind of a stunning looking film from the locations they chose and how they frame them. I agree. There's And there's a really great, um, another action stunt that you could tell most of it is actually like practical and it's not just a stunt i hate to use the word stunt it's a it's an action sequence and it flows really well and it's it's kind of we'll call it a breakout scene um mm. and you have someone uh, uh you know uh, who's in like a van and like uh, uh the, wa the water's coming up on him and then the river there's a really amazing shot yes that shot stood out as like and being practical was like that's yeah. pretty cool and there's a lot of what people are doing now which is sort of like the chess gopro like you see um you know when when accidents are happening it it puts you in kind of it does its best job to put you in that space instead of just showing you a wide shot mm -hmm. of what's going on and it does it without feeling like shaky cam it does yeah. it in this very kind of manic uh, uh like you're on a ride sort of to pull i it think off. this one was different it played with sequence segueing into another sequence after another sequence. I, I did appreciate the pacing in terms of how you think an action scene's over, but it continues. I always really like that. I think that's that can be very exciting. And from a movie that's two and a half hours, that's supposed to be this exciting, that's filled with this many practical stunts and supposedly, you know, real moments, I felt like I should have been more engaged. It was exciting. <laughs> it was. Vanessa Kirby, we have to talk about her. She is stunning. <laughs> Oh my God, she's like, she's a young arms dealer who's supposed to be the daughter of a previous character from the first and like fourth film, yeah, um, or fifth film or something. But 
Um, God, she was beautiful to look at, and I really hope to see her in more films. I liked her. Up. I liked her character too, and yeah. there's plenty of room for her to grow as a character, uh, not knowing exactly. I was growing. <laughs> I was showing. Superman was pretty good in this movie. I thought, like, he started out a little rocky. I was like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if I could watch him for this whole movie. And I was like, eh, he sold me. I was hoping he would do something more with his <laughs> his, little his the performance arms. and his character because I feel like having seen. Him play Superman, which is just stoic or whatever and boring. But he was in um, Man of, Man from Uncle. Man from Uncle. And yeah. He was really entertaining in that, and that made me think, man, I'd love to see this guy have a chance at playing James Bond. Ridiculously He's like breaking he, out of he his could, suit. He could in play this one. Terry Hasker, Terry or, or Harry Tasker. Harry Tasker if they if they try to <laughs> make a True Lies uh, reboot. Sure. I liked Alec Baldwin. He, I liked he, him too. He only has a few scenes in this, but he kind of stood out as being a, obviously a bit more utilized, and that made him more interesting than yeah. he was in the last film. Definitely more interesting and more utilized. Yeah. What do you think of how they used uh, Jeremy Renner? Well, in this that's. Film? I was just about to get to that because like the very first time you see Alec Baldwin and you he's like well the reason I made and I don't think this is spoiler the reason I made the jump you know to get out of the CIA and help lead uh, MI6 is because of blah 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 and the whole time you're going where the fuck is Brent like what happened to that character at least say like he got killed in action or at least something. mention him or yeah. mention him like what he was supposed to be poor Jeremy Renner he's, he's always like this guy who is supposed to be this these big parts of this franchise and then people just shit on him they, they interchange the woman every movie it seems like but you know. well Rebecca Ferguson we she wasn't on the her. team last time but she was kind of she's like, she's still great to look at she's a pretty great action heroine um on screen well because of her, what's happened since 2015 um they've obviously dropped down on the over sexualizing of her character and showing her in skip yeah. dresses and and giving her more of a i don't want to say manly presence <laughs> but but definitely nothing like that where they sell any sex appeal she's just a fighter and she's a badass but i kind of believe her in the role of Me being too. able to kick a guy's ass well, As I've said many times in this review, I just wasn't impressed. Maybe I had too high of expectations coming off of our marathon that we did last week. I kind of was reinvigorated to enjoy the series. The director of the last one did a good job. I'm expecting good things. Um, and it just fell very flat for me. I, I, I was not connecting to any of the action scenes overall. And um, other than the hand-to-hand -hand, hand -hand fight scenes, which were somewhat believable to me, I just didn't connect with this film. Maybe on a repeat viewing, I'll, I'll enjoy it a bit more. I'll let my guard down a little bit. Um, but my gulp score on this is going to be a 4.5. For me, uh, this hit all the right marks on what I wanted to see come next. I uh, thought it had a really solid beginning. It took a couple of chances by not opening up immediately with action. Uh, opening up kind of in a weird little kind of fantasy scenario. Um, I still think Tom Cruise is insane. We all know that, but I still think he's got it. I still think he's an action star. Doesn't really seem to be slowing down a beat in any Speeding of these things. Up, you might say. Yeah, he's almost like going faster. Um, um, I, I loved this movie. I thought it was a blast. Uh, I thought there was a lot of intensity, a lot of. It's a long movie. I, I have a couple of issues with the ending, the climax. Um, some of the choices made there uh, just seemed a little excessive. Um, but I'm going to give uh, Mission Impossible Fallout 7.75 gulps. That was our review of Mission Impossible Fallout. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, and as always, click like and or subscribe to our channel. Hit notification bell as well. If you like this review, you want to see what Cinema Gulp has in store next. John, where can they find us? Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's right. And for Cinema Gulp, I'm Ben. And I'm John. We drink your cinema!